What's up, everybody? It's Luke Bell with the Sideline Scoop. So this morning I was scrolling through um, Google, you know, sort of see what pa- people were saying um, after that Packers game versus the Jaguars. And I came across this article that I thought, sort of thought was interesting. It was an interesting, interesting take. And so I thought I'd sort of give my reaction to it. So as you can see here, um, I was scrolling through, and here I come across this article where it says the Packers are frauds. Um, they talk about the Buccaneers as well, but let's focus on the Packers are frauds. So that's a pretty big claim to claim the Packers are frauds. And so I was curious, why does he think the Packers are frauds? So let's sort of go through this article, sort of see what he has to say. And I'll give sort of my opinion and take on it. And I'll be curious to hear your guys take after you guys see sort of what they have to say. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree, what your thoughts are in the comments below right after you watch the rest of this video. So here we go. We can now dismiss the Packers as real contenders after a narrow win over the Jags. So this guy wants to dismiss the Packers after this one I mean, the Packers won this game. I know it was close, but he wants to dismiss them after this one game. It might be a little harsh, but let's see what he has to say. So while the AFC appears to be a one-team race with the Chiefs just in cruise control while they wait for the playoffs, the NFC at least appears to be wide open. But after watching the Packers struggle to beat a terrible Jacksonville team, I'm ready to cross them off a shrinking list of NFC teams that have a chance at the Super Bowl. All right, so now let's see why. Why do you think this? It's not just that Green Bay allowed the Jaguars to stick around that has me ready to cancel them. It's how it happened. The offense was fine, and only a handful of near misses prevented them from ringing up 30-plus points on Sunday. It was a defense that was far more concerning. Yeah, the defense has been concerning a lot this year. And yes, the Packers were without their top two corners, true, though I'd argue Kevin King's absence was actually a positive. Interesting take. But I'm more concerned with the fact that the Jaguars were able to move the ball reasonably well when Green Bay's defense knew that the only way to – the way they do it, the only way they do it, only way I guess means to do it, was by running or throwing screen passes. It was very reminiscent of the Packers' loss to Minnesota when Kirk Cousins didn't throw a single pass more than 10 yards downfield. Okay, so first off, he does have some good points. As all of us Packers fans know, this Packers defense is the area of our team where we have struggled. Obviously, our two losses to the Buccaneers and the Vikings was when we let Dalvin Cook rush for like 200 yards and four touchdowns and when um, – the Buccaneers rushed for over like 150 yards against us. So that is definitely true. And the Packers definitely, that is the area of concern for this Packers team. And, you know, yesterday the Jaguars did do a very good job running the ball. James Robinson had over 100 yards. So I definitely sort of agree. And I'm I'm guessing most of you guys agree that, you know, we all sort of know the Packers defense is um, the area that sort of worries us. But to call them frauds, that, you know, they're, they're not contenders at all. I don't know about that. So let's read the rest of this. If Jacksonville had even a competent quarterback behind the center, the Packers probably lose that game. Jake Luton has no business starting games in the NFL, and it showed whenever he was forced to throw the ball past the line of scrimmage. And despite that, the Jaguars' run game was still relatively successful, producing an average EPA of minus .08 and a success rate of 40%, which are both around league average. The pass defense was, of course, good, but that had more to do with Luton being bad than the Packers being good. All right. Then he finishes it off. There's just really no margin for error for the offense. Rodgers has played at an MVP level all season. Yes, he is a goat. And it was great once again on Sunday outside of the uncharacteristic un- inter- interception. Can't speak sometimes. And it'll have to be that good to give the Packers a chance against the Saints or Buccaneers. And yes, I know Green Bay won in New Orleans earlier in the season, but that was a different Saints team than the one we're seeing now. So here's sort of my take on the situation. So yes, we did barely beat the Jaguars. But when you take a look at lots of these, you know, other teams and other games in, these, in this NFL season, the Steelers barely pulled a victory against that terrible Cowboys team. But do you, see the, do you see people calling the Steelers out saying that they are not going to be contenders at all just because of one close game to a bad team? Like, I don't really know if you can sort of go that far. Personally, I don't know if you should take one game and sort of, you know, make it the, the narrative for the rest of the season is going to go. Cause look, look at the Packers and when they won the Super Bowl in like 20, what was it, 2011? In that 2010 season, we were 10 and six. So you could have taken six of those games and made that a reason, oh, the Packers are stink, the Packers are terrible. There is no way they can you know, sort of do damage in the playoffs. But the thing is, like, there are going to be games that are close like this when, you know, maybe the Packers don't play or come in ready to play against a team that is sort of fired up like the Jaguars were yesterday. I just think sometimes, you know, the NFL is a week-to-week game, and sometimes they're going to be close games, but that doesn't necessarily negate the possibility that the team can, you know, still perform in the playoffs, especially having Aaron Rodgers, a guy who, you know, can, you know, come back in close games and really keep teams, you know, or keep the Packers in the games. I just don't know if it's a, if it's um, reasonable to consider just sort of knock them out just from this one close game. And yes, I do agree, you know, the defense definitely needs to improve if the Packers want to win the Super Bowl um, and make it that far. They definitely need to, you know, show up on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and so I definitely agree with that point. But to say they're not contenders, I don't really agree with that completely. But, you know, we all have our own opinions. So let's finish it off here, of course. All this will change if the Packers win home field advantage throughout the playoffs, which matters more this season with only one team getting the bye. It's even more important given the state of Drew Brees' arm, um, which isn't going to hold up in Lambeau in January. All right. 
so basically he's saying if the Packers can get home field advantage, then um, what he says won't really, won't really, um, won't really matter anymore. I'm not really sure. Wait, of course, all this will change if the Packers win home field advantage. It will all change if they win home field advantage. Everything will change. Huh. Well, I mean, I definitely agree. If the Packers have home field advantage, that's definitely a plus for the Packers. Definitely being in Green Bay um, in January, having teams, you know, who aren't used to the cold coming up there. I definitely agree with that point. I think it's a little far to say the Packers are not contenders when they are right now, you know, pretty much the number one NFL team. Um, when you look at standings, so like, let's take a look right here. NFL, NFC uh, standings. They're pretty much right now the number one team in the NFC. So yeah, we're, we're pretty much number one right now because we beat the Saints seven and two. So I mean, to call that after one game, it's a little, a little extreme, I personally think. But, you know, everyone has their own opinion and everyone's entitled to their own opinion, which is a great part about, you know, opinions, I guess. So the Packers are 7-2 and two. personally. I think they still have a very, very good shot. They've looked amazing. They're one of the best NFL offenses in the NFL. They're going to get Lazard back soon. We got Marquez Valdez-Scantling playing good. Devontae is a beast. And so, you know, the Packers defense is a worry. But I still think the Packers can, you know, make a run for the Super Bowl. That's personally my opinion. Let me know down, down below your guys' thoughts. If you guys agree, are the Packers frauds? Are they not frauds? Let me know your thoughts down below. But that's all I wanted to break down in today's video. A little different than usual, but I figured, you know, why not sort of go through this article and sort of see, figure out, you know, why do they think that the Packers are frauds? I thought it was an inter interesting take. So that's all for today. Make sure you guys drop a like as always. And if you want to see some more content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also let me know if you enjoy these kinds of videos, if I should do more of these. Um, cause I'm probably also put another video out later today. This is a little easier to do cause I'm just sort of reacting real fast. I don't really have to edit much, but, um, but yeah, that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching as always. You guys are the best and I'll see you guys on the next video.